What's up, you guys? I'll go back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I have Gold Pony IG New Car Truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Lexus ES350, courtesy of Bobby Ray Hall Lexus in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So, we are in this one today because this is quite possibly the most reliable luxury sedan made in existence right now. You do have some great starting prices for what this vehicle is for its class. I should say so you gotta love that so ultimately this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 ES350 first one being the base starting at $43,190 which is a $700 bump from 2023 luxury for $48,360 ultra luxury for $52,080 F Sport design for $47,775 and lastly the F Sport handling for $49,650 but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant is going to be the same powering the es350 is a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 302 horsepower 267 pound feet of torque power sent to the front wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time approximately 6.6 .6 seconds that's respectable top speed 131 miles per hour in case you were interested mpg numbers then coming in at 22 in the city 32 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the ES wanted to mention to you guys a drive mode there's actually like a, a stock coming out just above the gauges here that gives you normal eco and sport and then a sport plus for the F sport trim levels at least but adjusting things like the shift points throttle response and the steering sensitivity and so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the ES 350 here to the test and Let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react here. And then we'll do the acceleration test after that. But yeah, let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, so before we do this paddle shifter test here, there is a full manual shift mode. I wanted to let you guys know that. Simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. It's then gonna tell you what gear you're in up on the digital gauges here. Digital gauges look amazing, by the way. I'll show you that later too. But so we found her straight away here. I got it in full manual shift mode. It's in sport driving mode. Let's downshift to first gear in three, two one go up oh, we're spinning let's try this again here we go Whee! all right they're not bad there is a slight delight to the paddle shifters though so definitely it felt quicker paddle shifters but again they're not bad and the other cool thing about having paddle shifters is it does tend to snow a lot here in pennsylvania so if you were to be going down a hill rather than hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road you can always just do a little bit of engine braking so just do a little bit of downshifting let the engine do a little bit of that slowing for you so you're less likely to slide off the road so they're good for that as well but now that I've got that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and give back full control to the ES here. Let's find yet another straightaway and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, you guys, keep in mind, it is a little bit wet out here this morning, but from a standstill in three, two, one, go. There it is. That's not bad. All right, that is not bad. Plenty of an acceleration to merge onto the highway. Zero to 60 and 6.6. .6. Like I said, that's plenty respectable, so definitely plenty of an acceleration for the ES350. I don't have any issues there. There was a little bit of slipping, but that's because it's wet out. Anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.1-inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 0 stopping distance goes, it's actually going to differ between the trim levels. So for all trim levels but the F-Sport handling, that comes in at 119 feet, which quite honestly is plenty respectable. But for the F-Sport handling, that's going to come in at 114 feet. Both of those numbers are sports sedan good, by the way. Anything in the one teens, that is a sports sedan number. Traditionally in sedans, you find 120s. SUVs, you find 130s. So 114 and 119 feet, that is plenty fine. And just coming up to that stop sign back there, as far as braking fuel goes, actually, let me hit it one more time. It's great. So absolutely no issues there. Definitely a little bit on the firmer side of things. So I do like the braking feel in the ES350. Then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front stabilizer bar. However, if you were to go with the F-Sport handling, you're going to get front 
and rear stabilizer bars. And then the F-Sport handling is also going to add to that an F-Sport tuned adaptive suspension. And so that's the one I always like to recommend. Why? because it gives you the best of both worlds. So what that does is it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it also tightens up that suspension during heavy quartering, giving you better handling as well. So again, best of both worlds. If you want the smoothest ride you can possibly get in the ES while getting best handling as well, go with the F-Sport handling trim level because that is how you are going to get it. So overall, as far as ride quality goes, it's actually been perfectly fine on my short little test drive here today. So definitely no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it definitely leans on the heavier side of things. So more so than the Toyota Camry, I can definitely tell you that. And I love the 10 and 2 grips and how thick the steering wheel actually feels. It's almost like it's almost like BMW M steering wheel, which I always say is the thickest grips possible. Now it's not to that degree, but it feels really, really nice. Like I love the steering feel. I love the handling in this thing. So yeah, absolutely no issues when it comes to all of that. As far as uh, cabin noise goes, that's been 100% on point as well. Now I have had the heat on the entire time in my short little test drive here today because it's in the 30s right now in Mechanicsburg. So it's quite cold, but other than that, as far as wind noise and road noise goes, it's definitely been very serene. So I haven't had any issues there. Touching our rear visibility, quite honestly, I don't think it can get any better than this. Looking out my rear view mirror, it's a massive rear window. And because of the shape of the sedan, you definitely shouldn't have any issues with rear visibility, but it does get better than that because rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the luxury trim level and up. It's gonna be optional on the base. So that's essentially gonna detect when there's any kind of mist or rainfall and then automatically turn on the windshield wipers for you. So definitely a very convenient feature there. And if you were to go with that ultra luxury, you will also get a 10.2 inch head up display projecting your speed, speed limit and safety features up onto your windshield. So assisting with forward visibility there yet again. But. That pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's look, go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Lexus ES350. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Lexus ES350 finished in eminent white pearl. In case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the ES is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number five, indicating that the ES350 is built and assembled here in the US, specifically Kentucky, in case you're curious. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front. Lexus spindle front grill with chrome surrounds does come standard. However, you will get some dark chrome surrounds if you were to go with one of those F Sport trim levels. To the bottom corners there, you will find front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel entire combination of course unique front grille design a really front fascia design for those f sport trims as well it's going to give you a more aggressive front grille really by led headlights to the corners there and by the way that comes standard on all trim levels across the board with led daytime running lights the automatic feature and automatic high beams as well so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so definitely a very nice convenient feature there as well but that pretty much rounds out the front end of the ES. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since they are around to the side of this one, chrome window surrounds do come standard. You are gonna find some F-Sport badging found on the front fenders if you were to go with one of those F-Sport trim levels. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored or gloss black side mirrors, dependent upon the configuration that you go with, of course. They will be heated with LED integrated turret signals that come standard for all trim levels across the board and power folding for all trim levels, but that base trim level in case you were curious. But then take a look down at the wheel setup, 17 inch alloys for the base trim, 18 inch alloys for the luxury and ultra luxury, and then 19 inch gloss black alloys for the F Sport trims. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, there is a rear spoiler that comes standard on the F Sport. Otherwise, it is a $200 option for all of the other trims. And that is what we have today. That's one of the options that we have today, I should say. LED taillights, I love the look of them and they do come standard for all trims across the board as well. You do have some ES350 badging, of course, on the trunk itself there. And just below it all, you will find integrated integrated dual exhaust outlets with satin chrome tips. I love that look, favorite look definitely by far. But having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Okay. 
All right, so now since you are around to the back of the ES, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, it is a power trunk for the Ultra Luxury. And by the way, that comes with a kick sensor as well. But otherwise, power trunk is gonna be optional. We actually do have the power trunk, so that's pretty cool. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.9 cubic feet. And there is actually a lot going on in that trunk. There is LED cargo lighting. You don't always find the LEDs in the cargo area. So I liked that grocery bag hooks as well. There's some chrome plated tie down anchors back there. If you were to lift that then up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire. As far as the uh, rear seats go, they don't fold down. There is a pass through. So if you had a long narrow object, like a two by four or something like that, you could put it through there, but the rear seats do not fold down. But then make our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 39.2 inches. That's a good bit for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear ventilation does come standard for all trim levels across the board. Dual rear USB charging ports also coming standard along with a 12 12 volt power outlet that's a rarity in sedans even a luxury sedans that is rare so that was pretty cool power rear sunshade comes standard on the luxury and ultra luxury trim levels there is a rear center armrest with cup holders and one of my favorite little interior accents is the samurai sword door handles i don't want to overlook them because they are stinking cool but then make your way up to the front seats 10-way power adjustable front seats coming standard 14-way power adjustable front seats for the luxury and ultra luxury trims, new lux finishes for the base and F-Sport trim levels, quilted leather for the luxury and ultra luxury, heated and ventilated front seats for the luxury trim level and up, memory settings for the luxury trim level and up, and then of course you get that enhanced bolstering for the F-Sport trim levels to really hold you in place around the turns. But overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was plenty fine. The F-Sport seats though, those are the most comfortable in existence. I will just say that. So I love that setup. These seats, they're plenty fine as well. But then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. And it was actually power adjustable too. That was pretty cool. New Lux finish is going to come standard on that steering wheel. So that was pretty nice. Wood leather combination for the luxury and ultra luxury trims. And then it is going to be heated for the luxury and ultra luxury trims as well, which I do have on today because like I said, it is cold out. So I love that heated steering wheel, but then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Lexus logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock, and the button to pop the power trunk there, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels across the board. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my front of the brake and press that silver engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, it is a digital gauge cluster and it looks pretty darn good. And if you adjust the drive mode, it's actually gonna adjust the color of those gauges as well. So if I put it in eco mode, it's gonna be a bunch of blue hues. If I put it in normal, it's gonna be kind of black and white. Then if I were to put it in sport, it's gonna be white and red. So much sportier look there. But of course there are steering wheel mounted controls. You can control what is on the left side of the digital gauges there. It gives you things like outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, trip A, trip B of course. There's a compass, radio information, safety features. So heck of a lot you can adjust up there if you really wanted to. But so then make our way to overall interior quality. A power moonroof is going to come standard on all trim levels across the board. Dual zone climate control, all trim levels across the board as well. Wireless phone charger coming on the luxury trim level and up. That is going to be optional on the base. Wood trim, you can find that on luxury and ultra luxury. Ambient lighting for the luxury and ultra luxury as well. I love that. But overall, as far as interior quality goes, Lexus crushed it as they always do. Absolutely amazing. So just in front of the shifter, you have this kind of like indented storage, which is finished in like felt. It's a super nice finish there. Just surrounding the shifter, you have this nice design to it. So it's not just a matte black or matte gray plastic. They actually took the time to put a design to it. So I like that. There's also dual cup holders to the right of the shifter, wireless phone charger behind it as well. And within the center armrest, actually a decent amount of storage. Again, you got that felt finish to it too. So I like the feeling of that. Got a couple USB charging ports in there, 12 volt power outlet as well. And a heck of a lot of soft touch material and wood accents throughout. And I like the two-tone interior color that we had on this one here too. And the Samurai door handles, that's probably one of my favorite features. But actually, you do also have home light controls for up to three different garage doors just below your auto dimming rear view mirror as well. So this thing's got a lot going for it. I'm just going to leave it at that. But so then making our way to the infotainment screen, there is an 8-inch color touchscreen display coming standard. However, a 12.3-inch color touchscreen display is going to come on the ultra luxury and it's going to be optional for all other trim levels. But either 
either way, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, you get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you can check out your car statistics up there, your climate control settings, uh, weather information, there's a factory navigation system that does come standard on the larger screen that we have today. Uh, radio information you can check out up there. So 10 speakers, by the way, come standard on all trim levels across the board. However, there is an optional 17th speaker Mark Levinson sound system that is available with 1800 watts. That's absolutely insane. But we do have the 10 speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. It's pretty darn good, honestly. I mean, you can tell the difference between this and the Mark Levinson 100%. Mark Levinson's gonna blow you away. It'll make you feel like you're at a concert, but this was pretty darn good as well. Honestly, 10 speakers in the size of what the ES is, that's plenty fine. You're not gonna have any issues there, but the Mark Levinson, if you like music, that's really where it's at. But last thing I wanna mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the ES in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Panoramic view monitor, that's gonna come on the ultra luxury, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the highest rating given by IIHS, that pretty much does it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard, driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, Lexus Safety Sense 2.5. That gives you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane tracing assist, lane departure alert with steering assist, road sign assist, dynamic radar cruise control, and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. Then if you were to go with the luxury or ultra luxury, that is going to add to that intuitive parking assist and automatic braking then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the ES350, I actually really liked it. And to add to that, you know, in the back of your mind, you're going to have incredible reliability with the Lexus ES. That is what they're known for. I haven't told you guys yet, but my dad actually had an ES. He traded it in right around 200,000 miles. Not that anything was wrong with it. That's just when he traded it in. So they definitely last for a good bit. Sound systems are great as well. Like I said, this 10 speaker sound system is great. The Mark Levinson is absolutely phenomenal. F Sport seats are the most comfortable seats I have tested to this date. I'm always gonna say that until something beats it. I've tested around 900 cars now and they are still my favorite in terms of seat comfort. As far as room for improvement goes, I don't like that the rear seats don't fold down. I wonder why they did that. I'm sure there's a logical reason, but I don't know. Kind of makes it hard to buy a TV or something and then haul it in if it's a, you know, one of the larger flat screens or something like that. Also, there's no all-wheel drive available on the 350 at least, which I wish there was because it's a lot of power being sent to just the front wheels and there was some slipping today. So would have loved to have seen all-wheel drive. Having said that, if you still want an ES with all-wheel drive, there's always the 250. So I don't know, but let me know what you guys think of the ES350 in the comment section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. <laughs>